Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Finance Friday. I am your host, Coach Susan. Now, when I'm taking my clients through goal setting, whether that is financial goal setting or just setting their goals around productivity and success in their lives, one of the things or the obstacles that I notice is that we set goals, but a lot of us do not go an extra mile to actually empower ourselves or to equip ourselves to actually be able to achieve those goals. So I noticed, for example, that um, in 2023, I would talk to people who had good financial goals. Like they, I mean, someone tells you everything they want to get done and everything they want to achieve and you get very excited for them. And I'm pretty sure because it's still very early in 2024, February is just almost coming to an end. I'm pretty sure that, you know, we still have some goals and some things that we still have in mind about um, some of the things we would want to do for ourselves or achieve for ourselves financially. Now, I hate to break it to you, but like writing down a goal or merely just saying it or purposing to do it does not necessarily guarantee that you are actually going to achieve your goals. And especially when it comes to finances, you must go beyond setting the goal and you must actually equip our, uh, yourself sorry, to actually be able to achieve those goals. So in my work experience and as I've been coaching my clients and taking them through some of this financial goal setting, I actually identified five of the notorious things that have actually been preventing us from achieving our financial goals. So I'd like to flag them for you in today's episode so that you can stay woke and remain aware of them even as you keep working on your financial goals. So let's look at what those things are now. The biggest culprit is actually a lack of financial literacy. If I had a dollar for the number of times I've met someone who's like, coach, I would want one of my financial goals is to invest. Another one is to get passive income. I have like very exciting goals. And then when you ask them, so what exactly are you going to invest in that is going to give you passive income? It's like, they don't know exactly what yet. Or, you know, when someone says, I'm actually going to start my investment journey in 2024. And you ask them, so what do you have in mind? What do you want to invest in? They don't know yet. So a lack of financial literacy is actually going to kill your financial goals faster than anything else. Because a lot of the goals that we set, whether that is earning passive income, increasing your sources of income, um, deciding where to invest your money and what your portfolio would look like, a lot of those things are dependent on financial literacy. Now, guys, listen. I talk about financial literacy very passionately, and that is ideally what my entire uh, business is uh, and my coaching business is based on what this whole entire channel is all about because one of the things that I'm very very aware of is and I know you you guys also know this was our education system was not designed to teach us financial literacy a lot of us had of emergency funds when we were too damn old a lot of us learned that uh, you know the stock market is not for everyone when we were too damn old a lot of us have actually, like we're in our 30s and our 40s and we've probably never, ever, ever attended a budgeting class. But for some reason, you went to school for years. We are talking over 22 years in school if you went all the way to uni level. To, so that you can get a good job or have a good earnings or rather have good earnings. Like the whole point of our education system is to enable us to actually earn some money. But no one ever took the time to teach you exactly how to manage that money, how to store that money, how to grow, multiply or even invest that money or even simply plan for it or budget for it. Now, that's, that's one of the things I have to keep reminding you guys that no one taught you these things in school. But just because no one taught you these things in school doesn't mean that now you get into a pity party or a blame game and say, oh, you know, no one taught me these things. It's time to take charge and to, you know, put take matters into your own hands and you must actually invest in your own financial literacy. Now, a lot of us want to take 50,000 shillings and invest in a, a treasury bill that we know nothing about. We want to take 20,000 shillings and put it in a money market fund. We don't know how money market funds work. We take 8,000 shillings every month after a recommendation from a close family member or friend and put it in an education policy when we have no idea 
how these insurance policies work. And when we are told to invest in financial literacy, we feel like it's too much money. But then again, I always tell people an investment in education or rather an investment in financial literacy will actually always pay you the best, uh, the best return and the best result. Because when you have financial literacy, you minimize the risk of losing money in bad investment decisions. When you have financial literacy, you minimize the possibility of someone conning you or getting into scam investments. When you have financial literacy, budgeting that should have taken you seven plus or even 10 years to learn and understand with the right guidance and with the right resources, tools and coaching, you're able to figure out in a year or even less. So one of the reasons you probably are not achieving these financial goals that you're setting for yourself is actually because you have no idea how to go about it. And the only way to have an idea is to actually invest in financial literacy. I always tell people there are some life skills that everyone must acquire as an adult, other than the ability to take care of yourself, groom yourself, uh, you know, clean your own house and cook your own food. One of the things that you actually need to invest in is financial literacy. If you've never been to a financial literacy class, you need to get one. If you have never gotten uh, read a financial book, you need to actually read one. As long as you are not financially literate and you think you know, but you really do not know, you're always going to slack or not achieve your financial goals at all. If you're interested in financial literacy, my channel is here. And I also am over, um, over at Instagram sharing snippets and, and tips and hacks around money management uh, almost on a daily basis. So please follow pages and platforms that actually empower you financially but do more than just that if you have a few extra coins to spare which i honestly don't think i need to tell you please also invest in terms of time and in terms of money and resources so that you can get educated i have a, a you know a bunch of self-paced courses on the legacy academy that you can access and i'm going to link it down in the description box below i do have resources and done for you budget trackers that you can also access at very affordable prices down on the link below so what i'm saying is if you've been trying to set financial goals and for one reason or the other you discover that i'm just not there's there's something wrong i can't get i i can't i, I can't seem to figure this thing out for myself please invest in financial literacy it is one of the most amazing acts of self-care that you can actually ever do for yourself when you have financial literacy you achieve your goals faster than when you don't the second thing that is preventing you from achieving your financial goals is normalizing bad debt guys the amount of times i have to talk about bad debt is actually starting to sound like a broken record but we cannot stop talking about debt because so many of us are already in debt and it's just February. Like you started 2024 with these goals and with these ambitions of, you know, you're not going to take out loans. You're going to clear the ones you already had last year. But it's only just February, two months into the new year, and you are already in debt. We have made it in such a way, and especially as Kenyans, we've made it in such a way that it's, it's, it's absolutely abnormal for some of us to even be without debt. Like when Tala is there, Mshari is there, KCB loans are there. Literally, there are over 15 mobile lending apps here in Kenya that you can access with absolutely no collateral at all. So we've already made it so normal to take out loans to supplement our lifestyles. And now I'm also starting to see, and I think we talked about this towards um, the end of last year, that, I mean, even when you want to buy a fringe these days or a, an item or an appliance in your house, there are quite a number of companies that can now offer you that on debt. You don't have to save for the entire amount, you can just buy it on debt and pay uh, slowly. And this is one of the things that I know you think it's convenient because loans are very accessible. I know you cannot imagine what your life would look like without this loan that you take every you know every time it's around 20th or 15th of the month because your income is over i know you cannot imagine what you would do without that loan that really helped you buy the bed and the and the couch and the fridge and everything but let me tell you guys as long as you have normalized bad debt what is bad debt consumer loans cons loans for consumption purposes only this is not money that you're taking out for income generation purposes. It's not money that you're taking for wealth creation or investment purposes. It's just money for consumption. As long as you normalize bad debt, it's going to be very, very hard for you to achieve your financial goals. Because you know what debt does? Debt chokes the life out of your salary. It chokes the life out of your income and your paycheck. 
as long as you are in debt, the money that you earn every month, at least a quarter or even half of it is not going to be yours. And that is why some, so many of us have found ourselves in that loop where you actually get your salary, you pay off the loan, and then you take out another loan to actually push you till the next time your paycheck comes in. I remember when I was actually in debt and I compare that to now that I am debt free and I see it very clearly. You can't see it when you're in debt because you think that debt is an ideally what is helping you survive. But debt is killing your financial goals. It's killing your financial dreams. It is the it's it's the uttermost definition of slavery. Because even most of us cannot imagine what would happen to us if at all we even lost our job or even our sources of income. So as long as you're normalizing bad debt, you've normalized living a life you cannot afford. You've normalized buying things you can clearly not afford. You've normalized doing these things to keep up with the Jonases or just for whatever reason you are in consumer loans. There's going to be a very, very thin chance for you to achieve your financial goals as long as uh, a bit, uh, a big ch chunk of your portion, uh, or rather the income that you earn is actually going towards debt repayment. When I became debt free, I started actually saying, oh my God, there's money for the emergency fund finally that people have been talking about. There's money for these sinking funds that people have been talking about. There's money for me to invest and travel. I only saw that when I got out of debt. So if you're in debt in 2024, just know that as long as you keep it up and as long as you keep taking out these loans for consumption purposes, your goals are just stories, a jabber, okay? So the first thing that you actually need to work on is eliminate all bad debt, eliminate all consumer debt. That way you release the pressure of your paycheck, you release the pressure of your income, and you're now going to actually start seeing disposable income that you can dedicate towards your financial goals like savings and investments. The third thing that could be preventing you from achieving your financial goals is actually depending only on one source of income. I've said this on this channel before and I'm going to say it again. One source of income is too close to none. And I learned that the hard way when I lost my job. I had, I mean, honestly, like I had so much loans, no savings, no investments. And this was actually like the only way I was going to survive in Nairobi. And then the worst happened. The one thing you think can never happen to you happened to you or rather happened to me. I lost my job and at that point I had nothing, like I had no savings, nothing to fall back on, but then I'd already gotten myself into a lot of debt situations. So one of the reasons you may not be able to achieve your financial goals is probably because you have an income problem. Now, I always tell people, whenever you're trying to achieve some goals, um, mostly one of the things we want to do is actually wealth accumulation and creation. You want to save, you want to invest. You want to introduce a level of comfort in your life where you don't always have to be in panic mode. Um, and when you actually realize that some of these things, like you've been watch, you've been budgeting, you've been watching how you're spending your money, you've been cutting unnecessary expenses, and for some reason, there's still nothing left. Now, instead of just giving up and deciding these things are not practical and they do not work, it might be important to consider that maybe you have an income problem and not necessarily a spending problem. And the only way to actually, um, you know, have, uh, or rather the only way to actually um, get out of an income problem is to bring in more money. I always tell people, as long as you've started your financial journey and you have one source of income every year, and even in 2024, one of the goals that you should actually have is to increase your sources of income or to diversify your sources of income. And this is one of the reasons I'd like to encourage some of you. Uh, in 2023, I had quite a number of conversations with people who are telling me, coach, I'm not a business person. <laughs> and, and, you know, we keep having this back and forth and argument with people because they're like, you know, there are people who are just meant for business. I'm not meant for business. But then you see, when you think about it that way, one that is a self-limiting belief, and that is a self-limiting mindset. And you've already shot yourself in the foot when you, you've decided even before you started that you're not a business person. Unless you're employed by three employers, as long as your income is only employment income, then you it's too close to none. Your boss can wake up one day and fire you. Your company can shut down. Something can happen in your industry that will render you jobless. You can't just depend on that one source of income. So I need you to actually start thinking out of the box and to drop the mindset that I'm not a business person. The way or rather the nature of earning money these days has completely shifted. And I talked a bit about that last year. Um... I think I'm going to link the video, uh, the video that I did about uh, multiple streams of income. 
um, you know, in the description box. And one of the things that I've been telling people is that you need to really think out of the box. You don't always have to start a, a, a business for clothes or, you know, an online thrift shop or to get into the food business. There are so many other avenues of earning money outside of employment that you can explore, some of which don't necessarily need you to put yourself out there. Some of which don't necessarily need to, you don't need to be on a channel like me and be like, welcome back to my channel. No, you don't, you don't always have to do that. You just have to be open-minded about like your skill set, the things you're, you're good at, the things you're a natural at, and start thinking of ways to achieve or rather to, to create an additional stream of income. Guys, I'll be very realistic with you. Everything I've been able to do, let's say since 2021, I would honestly have not been able to do it um, since 27, uh, between 2017 and 2019. Because between 2017 and 2019, when I was employed, I was actually earning 40,000 gross income. Um, and of course, we've, not, uh, we've actually not uh, factored in deductions like help contributions, payee, NSSF, NHIF. And as I told you guys, I had a circle loan as well. So I used to actually just be left with um, peanuts. And to be honest with you, there was very little I could do with that money, even with all my discipline. I tried as much as I could to maybe stay disciplined and all that, but it just never worked. When I compare those years of my life to now after I started a business and within my business model, I've actually been able to diversify my sources of income. I do earn from YouTube, for example. I also earn from coaching individuals. I earn from coaching um, also um, corporate groups and, and, and chamas and companies. I also earn from digital products and digital courses that I've created. So even within my own business model, I'm not just depending on one source of income. I've actually diversified my sources of income. And I've come to realize that it really just makes everything much easier because there were months that I wasn't able, like for example, December was a very, very tough month for me, December last year. I wasn't able to coach as much, but because I already had working systems and structure, like this channel was still up and running, so it still made me a few coins. Um, I still had my digital products. Um, and so those also made me a bit of money, but I wasn't able to coach that whole month. So you realize that when you diversify your sources of income, even when one is down, you're not left at zero. You're actually able to, um, you know, get a bit of money from your other sources of income. So maybe you're not indisciplined. Maybe you are actually budgeting and planning well. You're not overspending. You're not keeping up with the Jonas's. You're not even taking bad loans, but your money is just not enough. That's a very, very strong indication that you have an income problem. And the only way to solve an income problem is to actually diversify or add your sources of income. And for that, you really have to be creative about it. If you'd actually like to uh, consult me on the same or pick my brain, maybe to help you just narrow down on some ideas that you can monetize. I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below so that you can book a 90 minutes pick my brain session with me and then we can explore the same with you. Bottom line, increase your sources of income. The fourth thing that is preventing us from achieving our financial goal is lifestyle creep. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with improving your life when your earnings improve. The problem that I have identified is the rate at which we are improving our lifestyle versus the rate at which our income is in, in increasing. They are not, they, they, they don't go hand in hand. One of the things that I'm seeing a lot of us doing is that we are, we are upgrading our lifestyles quicker than our income is increasing, but we are also upgrading our lifestyles more and faster than how we are upgrading our savings and investments. I always love to remind people this. You can work your uh you can work your ass off <laughs> as much as possible and you can put in all the blood, sweat and tears and then your business is actually going to make you so much money or your employer is going to see your work and they are going to actually reward you. But as long as that money is not going to be reflected, that increase, it's not going to be reflected in your savings and investments. That increment you got has very little to do with creating financial security for you in the long term. If all the money that you received from the increment has gone to upgrading your lifestyle, none has gone to your financial freedom. And let's be honest with each other. I know that house may makes sense because it's closer to work, so you're saving on fare, 
I know that can now make sense because it's earning you more respect when you go out with your peers or when you go out to meet people. I know all of the reasoning that we use, but the bottom line is if your salary increase or your business income increase is not um, going to some of your savings and investments, that money is pointless in terms with regard to your financial freedom or your financial security in the long term. So we are not saying don't improve your lifestyle. I always tell people, as long as you've gotten an increase, even as much as you improve the quality of your life and you improve your lifestyle, ensure that also an equal or an even more amount is actually going towards your savings, your investments, and your debt freedom. Lifestyle creep is killing a lot of our goals, and it's not because we are not earning enough. It is that our income is increasing, but instead of us directing that money uh, towards our savings investments or debt freedom goals, a lot of it is going towards improving our lifestyles, improving the quality of our lives. But as long as, um, you know, the truth of the matter is that if you, you don't have financial security, however good the house you live in is, or however good the car is, it can all be taken away if you do not have some of these financial protection systems in place. So as you improve your lifestyle, please remember to equally improve your savings rate, your investment rate, and your debt repayments rate. One of the challenges I can give you, if in 2024, you receive an increment of any sort, either from your business or from your employer, challenge yourself to maintain your lifestyle as is, as long as it is decently comfortable just challenge yourself to maintain everything as is and direct that extra amount towards savings investments or debt freedom and believe me by the time it's 2025 just one year you're gonna see a very big difference in your finances a lack of financial discipline is also a big big reason why most of us cannot achieve our financial goals i like to tell these people i, I like to tell this to people and especially clients that i've worked with that the day you decide you are going to change your finances and the day you decide that you're going to start focusing on your financial goals, you must change your life, guys. Like there's no changing your finances without changing your life because there's no separating finances from life. So for a lack of financial discipline will be seen in, um, I know so many people who apparently have very big goals in their lives, but they have no budget. It doesn't make sense. How are you going to the farm without the tools to help you in farming? How are you actually going to become a coder without having a laptop or without having the software to help you in that? A budget is the tool that actually helps you to get to that place of financial organization, financial abundance, and financial freedom. So a lot of us do not have that financial discipline to number one, create an intentional spending plan. We do not have the financial discipline to even stick to what we actually said we are going to do. And as long as you lack financial discipline, guys, it's, 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 it's impossible. You can't achieve financial goals without financial discipline. It starts with financial discipline. Like most of the goals that we have require um, saying no to people. They require saying no to yourself. They require drawing boundaries with your friends, drawing boundaries with your family. They require delayed gratification. They require you knowing for a fact that there are sub certain accounts you can liquidate to buy that thing, but you decide because that money wasn't meant for this thing, then you're actually going to just wait until you raise money for the thing that you actually want to buy. So that's one of the things I always tell people. So many of us complain uh, either to ourselves or online or even with our friends that, you know, we are not achieving our financial goals. And I've even, uh, again, observed even last year as I was working with clients, a lot of us think that buying a budget tracker is going to change your life. Um, paying a finance coach is going to change your life. Attending program A, B or C is going to change your life. But what we've become, most of us, is serial coach payers, serial, um, you know, uh, resource buyers and budget buyers and all of those things. Like if I go into your phone or your laptop, I will find so many resources, so many books, so many pages, so many platforms that you are in that talk about money. But for some reason, you can't actually seem to even apply half of that information to your own finances. And that is actually because a lot of us think that these things are quick fixes. Head knowledge, 
and um, you having the right tools and resources and apps only contributes to 20% of your success when it comes to finances. 80% of your success is actually from your money habits, your money behaviors, and your financial discipline. So even as you're getting all these resources on this platform or on another platform, ensure and, and remember that 80% of your success is actually highly dependent on your own financial discipline. So you also need to call yourself out. You also need to actually start uh, looking at your bad habits, your repeated behaviors, your self-limiting beliefs and all of those things and start working on that. Because as long as you don't do the work yourself, no coach, resource, budget tracker app or anything is going to change your finances. At the end of the day, it really does depend on you. So I really hope that this was helpful and impactful. Please let me know in the comment section down below what is something that you are already aware of that really stood in your way when it came to achieving your financial goals last year. And maybe let me know what you're doing about it. And if you have a question regarding what you're struggling with when it comes to financial discipline, please feel free to leave these questions for me down below and I'm going to take some time to answer them. Again, if you'd like to consult me on a professional basis and just have a 90-minute session with me to just take you through whatever the hurdle is in your finances, I'm going to link uh, a, a booking link in the description box so that we can have a chat and figure it out together. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I will see you on the next one.